Okay. Okay, so last time we left off, we, we saw the two new versions of the work energy theorem uh, and me mechanical energy, potential energy with springs, with gravitational forces. And so you only get potential energy. So by the way, I'm leading into that AP technicality. You only have potential energy when you define the system to include the earth. And so I think I've kind of pointed that out, that gravitation must define your system. You have to have a reference point to get that change in height. And same thing goes for true for elastic potential energy. You can't measure displacement if you don't have an equilibrium or some kind of identifying position. And so to have kinetic energy, your object just has it, right? Do you have mass? Yes. Do you have speed? Are you moving? Yes. So an object can have kinetic energy, but an object cannot have potential energy on itself. Does that kind of make sense? And so that's the first thing I'm gonna write down there at the bottom. Let me erase, those were just notes to me. And so how you define a system, and I'm actually gonna, the first thing I'm gonna say is some of this is unique. That's a nice way of putting it to AP physics. In other words, you talk to your friends uh, in other AP or non-AP physics classes, or you go to even Khan Academy, you go to you know just a textbook, it may not make this distinction. Okay, but on the May 12th exam, expect at least one, maybe even two questions that are going to get into this distinction that I'm talking about. Okay, so what's unique to AP? If your system, let's, let's make this a table. How do you define a system? If it's defined as the object only, whether it's a box, a car, whatever, if it's the object only, the energy it can possess or it can have internal to the system, that's AP lingo. So let me put that kind of internal energy, internal to the system is kinetic energy only. It doesn't matter where it is. It can be high, high, high up on top of the, you know, Empire State Building, whatever. If they define nitty gritty system as object only, that height does not matter. It's only kinetic, okay? Because you can't have potential energy with yourself. That's kind of what I tell myself. But what if they include the earth? The object earth system. Well, because the object's there, you can include kinetic energy, but you can also say, well, I can have a reference point above the earth, right? I can have a height above the earth. The earth is what I'm measuring to. And so now you can include that gravitational potential energy, okay? And by the way, I'm gonna kind of put another little asterisk here. This is the everyday norm. And so if you, you know, Google about systems, if you Google transfers of energy, this is the everyday norm. Even in this class, most of the situations, if they don't get nitty gritty, okay, this is the norm. We typically always include potential. When you're high up on the uh, Empire State Building, you have height, gosh, that's a lot of potential energy, right? And so this is the everyday norm to include potential. And then kind of a special case on the special case, what if you have a spring? So I think we left off with springs and I'm gonna go back to springs. I, I found a nice simulation uh, that I'm gonna just demonstrate for you. But what if you have a spring involved? Well, is it part of the system or is it not? If nitty gritty, read carefully, read slowly. If they say object earth and spring, is your system, 
Well, the object can have kinetic energy. The earth allows us to include gravitational potential energy. And if the spring is internal to the system, then you can include elastic potential energy. Now note to self, if there's no spring at all, don't even bother. It's only if there's a spring. Does this make sense? And so I'm gonna add kind of a, a third column and we're gonna do some examples, okay? We're gonna do some examples coming up. Let me move that real quick. Where's my select? I'm gonna move that, make sure I come back to it. Okay. And so my third column, who's external? Who's external? Now, really, we should be, you know, thinking of a situation. So let's think of a situ situation where there's a spring, there's a height with the earth, and your object's moving. So just whatever situation you want to make up there, okay? Hmm? Trampoline. That's a good example. Okay, so trampoline. You're jumping on the trampoline. So we've kind of defined the internal pieces to the system. So what would be external? Well, if your object only is the distinction of your system, then the earth, you'll make sure you check my spelling today. The earth is external and the springs would be external. And what that means is these external forces would be doing non-conservative work, okay? Well, what about if the nitty gritty question says the object and earth are part of your system? Well, then gravity is now, potential energy is internal, but the spring would be considered external. And I guess we can list out the energy. So UG, US, up above, and here it would only be US. And then in the last distinction, earth, spring, and object are all defined as your system. And so notice all those energies are internal, so there is none. So none, at least based on these three. These are the main three characters of your energy problems. Does it kind of make sense? That's the goal right here. Read carefully, read slowly. Somewhere along the way, multiple choice, free response, they'll distinguish how your system is defined, okay? And yes, it matters. Don't worry, we'll practice. Okay. And then another thing that's brought up when you talk about systems is this kind of, is it open? Is it closed? And you may, this to me is more, uh, relatable. If you have an open system, that means there can be non-conservative works working on that system, right? Work done by non-conservative. So no, no more like this is kind of separate, still talking about systems here, but no more like how you define the system. But the problem may say you have an open system. So watch out for other forces to come in and do non-conservative works like applied force, tension force, whatever. Or if it's considered a closed system, AKA isolated is another way of saying that. Then everything's internal, okay? And so maybe the non-conservative work is equal to zero. That's the nice one. When all of our energy is just in the form of mechanical, there's no frictional losses, that kind of thing. Okay, so these are um, no losses. Let me put it that way. No losses of changes of energy. Up here, yes losses. Okay, so last time we ended kind of talking about springs. We drew our picture progression. Um, and if we were to animate it, it would be a simulation. 
And so I know that it's on the content library, but O physics, I have a, will it click? No, it will not. Hold on, let me attach my keyboard. Or will this do it? Well, I think I have it open already. O physics. I love that name. O physics. And I want new share. Come on. New share, Google. Okay. And can I make it bigger? Boom, boom, boom. And reset. Okay. And so what we're gonna do here, um, I can't like, no, I can control the speed. I've got it on the slowest here. And so we've got a spring and I chose the simulation that puts it on a horizontal tabletop. And somewhere in here, it says it's frictionless. So don't worry about any energy losses. Uh, we're gonna retain whatever energy we have. Now, if there's no height change, then there's no gravitational potential energy at all to consider, right? There's no changes. Now we do have a spring and it's gonna start this picture at X max. I don't know if you can clearly see, but um, it's identified the left side of the box as X max. That's our maximum horizontal position. And so this is full stretch. We're not starting at the equilibrium. We're starting at a full stretch. Everybody good before I hit run? Okay. Now on, you see, just to kind of give you an idea, you see in the middle of the screen, this, you know, curved energy graph. Okay. It's energy of three different kinds versus position, okay? Yes, it's gonna be curved. So there's some darker dots that are gonna trace along the way, okay? So right now, when you're at maximum stretch, you start out with maximum elastic potential energy. At maximum stretch, we're gonna be starting, but even if it wasn't the start, this is where you see zero velocity. This is where it can't go anymore to the right. And so we see that split second stop. And so you have no kinetic at this moment. Everybody good with the middle graph? So that's energy versus position. But if we look to the right, now I know it's not, I haven't hit run yet, but this is some physics variable on the y-axis, we've got five versus time. So this is five graphs in one, by the way, okay? So they are different colors. And so you, potential energy is red. Hopefully you can tell the color. And so it relates to the potential energy that we just talked about. But now it's gonna be versus time. And then K is green. K is at the bottom there of the, the right side graph. And so it's gonna start at zero when time begins, but it's gonna be plotted versus time. And then the three above, orange is position. We're starting far from zero. We're starting at a maximum distance from equilibrium, right? And so there you see it's got not zero. Starting from a rest, V does start at zero. And then A, let's see, I can annotate here. Let me annotate. A, I'll switch to purple. Notice that purple dot is not zero. It's below zero. When you're on the right side, you're getting pulled by the spring. What direction? To the left. Now they don't have force here, but if I'm getting pulled to the left, Acceleration happens, yes, changes in velocity, but more specifically, acceleration happens because of the forces, the net forces on you. So if you're getting pulled to the left, it's a negative force. It's a negative acceleration. Does everybody get the start? 
all those physics variables. Now, will, will AP give you a five in one graph? Probably not. Will they maybe do a two in one? Sure. Well, you have to, you know, not necessarily matching, but here's a position graph. What acceleration graph, multiple choice, aligns with it, is, is representing the same motion. And so notice when you have a positive max position, you have a negative maximum acceleration. And that relates back to that Hooke's law, the negative relationship with the force. All right, let's hit play or run. Here we go. It's going to be a lot, so I'm going to not talk for a second. I'm going to give you a minute to just watch it. Now, don't watch the same graph. Don't watch the same thing because it's just going to repeat itself. If this tabletop's frictionless, if it's an ideal spring, there's never going to be losses. It's going to go, 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 go. Now, in real life, it would come to a stop. Yes, eventually, as time goes on. So here we go. Three, two, one. So maybe watch the position graph. And actually, I'm going to pause it when it reaches that maximum. Let's pause there. Evaluate each graph. Notice we started on the right, I hit pause on the right. So previously we talked about circles. This wasn't really a circle, but can we call it a cycle? We went there and back. And so this is one cycle for that spring motion. Look at your position graph. It started in the positive. At some point, y'all tell me, when do you have zero position? What, what do we call that halfway? Equilibrium. And so that X equals zero down there on the bottom ish, left ish, in the middle that we're looking at, that's equilibrium. When you pass through equilibrium, typically that's your zero mark. Again, with springs, you gotta have a reference point. It's a system. And so you have zero position when you're at equilibrium. What kind of velocity do you have at equilibrium? Uh, yellow may not be the best choice. Trying to pick a color that's not already pink. So when you're at equilibrium, notice what's true. So this is gonna be, the first time it goes through equilibrium. Can y'all see the pink? So at equilibrium, X equals zero. Velocity is what? Negative, and I'm gonna focus more on the maximum. Isn't that a maximum speed? It's negative because it was moving what direction? To the left. So that's why it's negative, but it's a maximum speed. What kind of kinetic energy do you have when you pass through equilibrium? A maximum, look at that green kinetic energy. It's a maximum. And who can tell me why it's not a maximum negative? Do you notice the energy versus time graphs look different than the others? There's no negative, they're all above zero. Why don't you have max negative kinetic energy at this point? It's scalar, one half MV. Squared, even if you said square the negative max speed, the negative is gonna go away. But the first three, X, V, and A, those are old vectors, right? Old kinematics. But our energies, plural, both of them are scalar. You either have it or you don't. Changes in energy can be negative, but the energy at any given point is always positive. Okay, and again, notice I didn't talk about the acceleration graph. When you pass through the equilibrium, we said last time 
there's no force acting on you because the spring force is always trying to pull you towards equilibrium. So if you're at equilibrium, there is no force, there is no acceleration. And that is the weird part for students. They're like, how can you have a maximum velocity at this point and have zero acceleration? Well, take off your one dimension constant acceleration hat with kinematics, take it off and put on your, this hat. It's, it's called simple harmonic motion, but we haven't, that comes like next. But this back and forth, back and forth does not have constant acceleration because you don't have a constant force. And so that's where we'll call it, right? So with this cyclic motion, acceleration is not constant and you have zero acceleration when you pass through equilibrium, okay? And then one more spot, let's look at, um, let me clear and I'll kind of, start fresh. Uh, let's take a look when it's at your maximum compression. So I'm going to run it again, and then I'll pause it just so we can talk about the end. It's already been there, but run. Oh, it's annotating. Hold on. Run. Pause. So now look at this end point. So when you're at max compression, okay, max compression, you're to the left of equilibrium. So you have a negative position, negative displacement. You come to a split second stop before you change direction. And the force on the block at max compression would be now what direction? The spring is trying to push the block, what direction? To the right, positive. So what kind of acceleration do you have at the max compression? You have a positive and a maximum, look at that. So this is an A max that's positive when you're on the most left side, okay? And then once again, your energies, there are no negatives. But when you have max compression or max stretch, you have maximum potential energy. And this is your US because we're not changing height. So it's specific to elastic. And then your kinetic, well, you're at a split second stop. So you have no kinetic or look at your energy conversion. If this is having no losses due to friction or due to anything else, then previously when I had max kinetic, are you noticing just a reversibility with these energies? Okay. And so you have zero kinetic energy at that end point. We could take another look when you're most right, we've looked at equilibrium, okay? And anything in between is a place where it's not zero and it's not a max, right? And so the in-between points can still have the signs, they just don't have zero or max. <sighs> and I'm gonna end, just I'm gonna let it go a little bit more, just so you can, you know, maybe I'll speed it up a little bit. Oh, yeah, that's a good speed. And if we let time just keep going, <laughs> the five stack graphs, have kind of quit growing, it's just going to repeat. It's cyclic. Okay. Questions for me? Yes. Yes, the beauty of simulations. <laughs> if it's in what they consider an ideal spring, it has no losses due to itself, right? And if we say it's a frictionless tabletop, which somewhere maybe above or below, it does say it's frictionless tabletop. And so, and gravity isn't trying to slow it down, right? There's no changes in vertical at all. And so this thing would just keep going and going and going in the you know, physics land, physics world. Uh, but if there was friction, eventually it would not go to the right. It would not go to the left as much, right? It would settle at its happy place 
come, come turn it off or check it, whoever that is. Okay. Um, and so it would eventually settle at its happy place or resting place known as equilibrium. Okay. Any other questions? Okay. And so the only other thing that we could do on this one, and, it, and you can come here um, if you just want to, you know, um, go to the link on the content library, you can if you want to play. Over on the left hand side, we can actually change how strong um, the spring is. You can change the spring constant, K value, remember? You can change the mass of the block and you can change um, how far you stretch it. Okay, so you can make changes and then make a prediction. Okay, we'll do that with our problems, um, not necessarily here. Okay, so let me, I think that's it for page one. New share, back to OneNote, hopefully it works. Okay, and so we've got the three versions. Again, I highly recommend you memorize those. Okay, AP gets nitty gritty. Their formula chart doesn't, but the questions do. And then how you define a system. Those are the, the you know, things to keep in mind in terms of nitty gritty. Let's do some practice. Now, page two and page three are gonna kind of have the same format. Um, this is a nitty gritty problem, okay? Um, we start, we're starting with the nitty gritty, just so you have a heads up for nitty gritty from the beginning. Not all problems are gonna be nitty gritty, okay? In fact, uh, this morning I got curious on the nitty gritty differences in systems. And so I looked in a textbook, they really don't get nitty gritty, but I got out the five steps to a five, the AP review book by um, Greg Jacobs. Uh, and you know, I'm not promoting one necessarily over another. They all probably are good. Um, five steps to a five, in my opinion, is gonna be the best bang for your buck. It's, it's not so thick that it's so overwhelming and it's, you know, 20 bucks or less, depending on which one you get. And so it's not going to break the bank too badly. But in there, when it gets to the system approach, he actually says, you know, um, I forget exact words, but something of the spirit, because the AP planning committee just made this decision to be nitty gritty, um, we have to pay attention to details. And he said, you can probably answer most of the questions on the exam without this nitty gritty. Again, most problems include the earth, but there's gonna be one or two questions where you can't include the earth. And so that's what these pages are about. And so we've got a pendulum, a ball on the end of the string, and we've seen this before with forces. Now we're gonna take an energy approach and it's gonna, it says it's swinging downward, present tense. Maybe in the past it was swinging up, maybe in the past it was at its max height, right? And come to a split second stop. But for our present tense right now, it has a velocity in the direction shown. Everybody good? It's swinging downward. Now I've been recommending force diagrams all along and I'm still gonna do a force diagram because we have to identify those forces as whether they're conservative or non-conservative, right? And so hopefully you remember we've got gravity. And then if you're swinging from a string, there's also tension. What direction is the tension force acting on the ball in the present tense? Upright, it's gonna be parallel to that string. Now in the circular motion, so a little review here, tension should be bigger because center seeking needs to be bigger, right? And so to be technical, tension is gonna be bigger here in our force diagram. And that's it, it's not being pushed, it's just swinging. And so, and notice the two forces on our diagram are the two listed there in our first part of the table. Uh, first question, who's conservative, yes or no, or identify which one is. And so gravity is a conservative or no? It is. Gravity is conservative. Uh, and the, the, the way that I remember and the way that I would recommend, does that force have an associated potential energy? 
And we have a gravitational potential energy, so yes. Do we have a tension potential energy? No, tension is something that uh, A, it can vary, uh, plus it doesn't have an associated potential, so no. Next question, are they doing work? And if so, is it positive, negative? So is gravity doing work on this object? And remember to figure out work equals a force that's parallel to the distance. It's swinging downish. Gravity, because it's down and right, but it's downish. Is gravity pulling up or downish? Yeah, so down and downish would be a positive work. Positive work done by gravity. It's moving down and to the right. Tension is pulling up and to the right. Is tension doing work? Yes, it's doing negative work done by tension. Does gravity have an angle? No, the sign matters because it was moving. You have your force of gravity, right? Downward. And then it's moving this direction, but it's going to have a vertical component in the downward direction. And so it's that downish, is what I was meaning, component of down. Oh, it would be positive because that the down force of gravity and that component of the distance that's down would have a separation of zero degrees, right? Down and down would be zero degrees, and that would yield a positive work. Where tension is pulling more, you know, up as a component, and the downward motion, that would be 180, so tension's doing negative work. Okay. Actually, hold on. Yeah, my shirt. Gravity is such a downer. I got it from Houston NASA Space Center. Anyway, I went crazy in the science, you know, gift shop. But anyway, actually, hold on. Now that I'm looking at the picture here, if distance, let's draw this out. The immediate distance traveled, again, small window of time, is down into the right, but your tension is pulling perpendicular to that. I'm changing my mind. It would be zero. The tension is perpendicular to this instantaneous motion. I'm going to call it zero. So to me, drawing the picture helps, right? Drawing the picture helps, looking at that parallel or perpendicular relationship. Okay, we'll see if that makes sense as we go. We'll, if it's wrong, we'll run into an issue. If it's right, it should go smoothly. Note to self, right? <laughs> now let's look at the energy changes. Changes in kinetic energy for the object. Well, as it moves downward, what's gonna happen overall? It's gonna speed up, right? So our final, Ke final minus Ke initial. Now, initially it could have a speed, present tense, but in the future, as it swings down, it's gonna speed up. And so that's gonna be what kind of change? It would be a positive change in Ke. And connect it back, change in kinetic also equals net work. Well, if I put those two works above together, positive and zero, you would get a positive net work. So yay, thumbs up, it matches, right? What about the change in potential energy? Well, last time we learned, and, and there's no spring here, it's a string, but it doesn't say it's an elastic cord. And so it's gonna be gravitational potential only here, okay? No springs, no elastic. And so we said the new equation is mg delta y, or again, a lot of textbooks and such, they mgh, but with changes, you'd have to look at a change in height. So it starts high, it goes low. So if you final minus initial, 
what kind of change in potential energy do we get? Negative. Negative change in gravitational potential energy. Then I'm gonna change color for emphasis. Now we get AP nitty gritty, how you define a system. And so this change in energy, again, we only study mechanics. So, you know, I think I'm a little partial to ME. Do y'all know my first name? Oh, quiz time. What's Miss Earhart's first name? Don't look it up. Melinda. So I'm a little partial to ME, right? Okay. And so AP Physics 1 only studies mechanics. And so that delta E is mechanical energy. We're not talking about solar, wind, da 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 okay? But the big part of it here, what if you only consider the ball as your system? This means that the earth is external, okay? That's what it means, your, your viewpoint. And so if it's just your ball, you can only look at what energy the ball has, which can only be kinetic. And so whatever you said earlier about the kinetic change would be the same answer here. And so it'd be a change, a positive change in mechanical energy. And I'm gonna highlight earth external only kinetic. Well, what if we then, next part, what if we include the earth? That means we can include kinetic energy and any changes in gravitational potential energy, okay? And so we had a positive, we had a negative. And so, you know, we don't have numbers here, which one's bigger, that, that way is kind of hard. Yes, we're going to get there, but maybe if we don't think about the simulation, we don't know if they're equal and opposite sign, right? We don't know if it's a positive 20 and negative 20. You're putting it? Okay, good. Don't pull from the board. Good luck. I, if I were you, I would just pull from the bottom. <laughs> okay, so we don't know if it's a positive 20 and a negative 20, or maybe it's a positive 30 and a negative 10. We don't know. So there's another way to find it. And so this is changes in mechanical energy. Remember, it's non-conservative works that change your mechanical energy. So that's that third variation of the work energy theorem. Now we should be able to answer it. Are there any non-conservative works being done? Look at the top of the chart. We said uh, tension would be non-conservative because we answered no to it being conservative, right? A little weird there. But we said, oh, because it's perpendicular to the direction of motion, and that would be true at every single point. If it's moving tangent to the circle and tension's always pulling perpendicular to that tangent direction, then it'll always do zero work. And so if you have zero here, then we would have zero change in mechanical final answer, which would tell us that every moment that you are speeding up, you're losing gravitational. It's that give and take between the two, just like our simulation. Does this make sense? Nitty gritty, nitty gritty. Questions on the pendulum before we slide down and do a ramp. All right, next problem. We've got a block, it's sliding up. That matters, right? So the direction of motion, the distance traveled is gonna be up the ramp, parallel. And it says we do have friction, okay? With friction, maybe tomorrow there's no friction. I would expect half the questions on the AP exam to have friction, half to not, 50-50. All right, let's start with a force diagram. So what forces are acting on our block? Of course we have gravity, right? 
Where's the only place you wouldn't draw FG? Outer, outer space, right? Um, you know, even the space station, we haven't talked about this yet, but even the International Space Station still is in the gravitational field. If it wasn't, it'd be gone. Goodbye. And we don't want that. It, yeah, anything in orbit with the Earth, the moon, still is under the effects of gravity. It wouldn't, or we haven't talked about orbiting yet, okay? Gravitation is one of those mini units we got to throw in when we have time, okay? We got three big units, three mini units for semester two. Okay, what other forces? Y'all know normal force, what direction? Perpendicular to the surface. And so here it's gonna be up and to the right. How big do we draw it? Mm -mm. It's got to be smaller than gravity. Remember, gravity is going to be a hypotenuse in our triangle. And so normal force is going to be smaller. And if you're like, what triangle? You remember this? I know I went quick. Hopefully it's the 50th time you're seeing it, right? Okay. And then one more force, or is there two? One, who? Friction would be drawn parallel to the surface. What direction? To the right and down, right? It's parallel to the ramp, but it's down the ramp. And we really don't know how big. They don't tell us if it's, you know, um, well, it can't be constant speed. So we know it's got to be slowing down. But anyway, it's some magnitude down the ramp. All right. And no, and the reason I said or two, some students are going to put an applied force. They're going to put an up the ramp force, and they might label it FA. They might say F motion, which is totally wrong. They might say F net, which is totally wrong. Um, you know, weird things, right? But it's not being pushed. No applied force. So no note to self. No FA. Plus, it's not in our list. Now, you. by the way, this chart and list, not AP at all, okay? A lot of science people, though, like lists and tables because it's a way to concisely present the data, okay? Graphs also. And so notice in today's problem, the listing, just the three forces. So rather than yes or no, I'm going to change gears just kind of with our verbiage. Who's conservative? Who's not conservative? Gravity. Yes. Conservative. Normal force. Do we have a normal uh, potential energy? No. So it would be non conservative. Friction. No, non conservative. Who's doing work? So we'll draw out the pictures. Gravity. Now here's where ramps are special. I'm going to draw the component, okay? Because remember, it's all about that parallel portion of the force to the distance. Or you could parallel the distance, right? But with ramps, typically, we have that gravitational FG parallel down the ramp. It's moving up the ramp. Gravity is doing negative work. Normal force perpendicular to the ramp, it's moving up the ramp parallel. So by definition, zero. And then friction is acting down the ramp. It's moving up the ramp. Friction would be doing negative, negative work. Good deal. Changes in kinetic. Well, you can talk about the speed up, slow down, but you can also look at net work. And so when you put all these works together, I got a negative work of gravity plus zero, and then plus a negative work done by friction. So your net work is gonna be negative and your change in kinetic energy will be negative. And doesn't that make sense? Think about the speeds. What's happening to the speed of this object as it goes up the ramp? 
slowing down, which should also give you. So there, there should be an alternate way to answer the question, most cases. What about changing you? Well, it's no springs at all. Can we agree there's no springs today on this problem? But couldn't they put a spring on it at some point? They could launch it with a spring, right? Okay, but today they don't. So it's just the gravitational potential we need to consider. And so here's another way. We didn't do this on the other one, but this comes from negative works done by conservative forces. So that's the other version that we learned last time of the work energy theorem. We'll do the height in just a minute. And so conservative, well, it was just gravity. And so the minus, and then gravity did a negative work. Remember they have a negative relationship in the theorem. And so a minus negative gives us a positive change in gravitational potential, MGH it, does it make sense? MGH or MG delta Y is the other equation for gravitational potential energy. Does it make sense that it would be positive? Why? It's going up, the height is increasing. So eight, H or delta Y is increasing. So that part should make sense. Okay, now put your nitty gritty hats on, changing color, just, you know, a little bit different. Now it's how you define the system. And so if the system is the block only, we can only consider what kind of energy? only kinetic and so we had a negative change in kinetic up above and so we'll have a negative change in mechanical energy okay and if all we're considering is kinetic well it's slowing down something's causing this object to slow down and then if we define the system as block and earth well now i can consider changes in kinetic and changes in gravitational potential energy. Again, no springs today on this one. And so we have a negative change in kinetic. We have a positive change. Do they net out to zero? Well, it's kind of unclear. I know that our answer previous did, but let's take the other approach, that third version of the work energy theorem is that changes in mechanical energy happen because of non-conservative work. Do we have a non-conservative force doing work on the object? Yeah, who? Friction. Friction's always pretty much gonna lead to losses, right? And so we do have work of friction. It's doing negative work. And so we'll have a negative change in mechanical energy. And it's not in the first one, gravity was also slowing it down, right? Gravity was considered external, if you just look at the block. And so it's because of gravity and friction. If you wanna add that in, it would be a negative work of gravity and a negative work of friction. But now that I include the earth, gravity is internal to the system and you just focus on the friction. So they're both negative, final answer on that one, those two. However, the numbers would be different. Okay, feeling okay? Feeling better as we do more practice? To learn physics is to practice physics. We'll do one more together and then I'm gonna have y'all try one. Number three, page three, sorry. I don't know what number, ignore the number. But page three has a spring on a tabletop and notice it's gonna fly off the table. And then the fourth one is a pulley with no friction. I don't know, which one do y'all wanna do? I do one, you do one. Which one are we gonna to do together? I say, let's do the spring because we haven't done one together. The pulling, although it's different, there's no friction. So, <laughs> so let's do the spring one together and then I'm gonna have y'all try the other. 
Okay, so up on the top, a block is pushed by a compressed spring and it goes airborne. So it does become a projectile. By the way, you can answer most projectile problems with energy. And the benefit of that, no X, Y chart. Energy scalar, it's not a vector like our velocity and acceleration. So, you know, at some point we'll do a projectile problem, but take the energy approach. Okay, so now the force diagram is actually gonna be different. When it's on the table, it is pushed by the spring. And so, by the way, they don't say it, they don't list it. We'll say it's a smooth tabletop, huh? It'd be different if there was friction, but there's no mention of it being a rough tabletop or again, this one lists them. And so we'll say it's smooth. What forces are acting on the box as it goes across the table? We got gravity. We got normal force. What direction? Up, how big do I draw it? Here it's gonna be equal to the weight because there's no vertical motion at all, no other vertical forces at all when it's on the tabletop. And then we've got one more force and applied via a spring. So this is a special, so I'm not gonna call it FA, I'm gonna call it FS. It's due to a spring. And what direction would it go? To the right. So FS. But then when it's mid air and we're answering all these questions from very beginning to very end, by the way. And so mid air, I need to consider, well, we still have gravity. Is the spring pushing on it anymore? Is the table pushing on it anymore? So it's just gravity, neglect air resistance. All right, who's conservative and who's not? What about gravity? Conservative, or you can answer yes. The spring, it has an associated potential energy, and so it is considered conservative. I know that I said it's applied, but that's why it's a little special to use FS, right? What about normal force? No, non-conservative. Who's doing work? Is gravity doing work? Well, we have... I know that here's where we got to like part one, part two. So in part one on the table, you've got gravitation down, but it's moving to the right. And so you'd have zero work of gravity when you're on the table. But if I call part two, the airborne part, well, I've got gravity straight down. And then if I look at tangent direction, maybe the direction's here, but there's some angle between them. Downish and down is going to say gravity does positive work. So overall, final answer, does gravity do work on this object from start to finish? Yes, in the airborne portion. What about the spring? Well, only when it's in contact. So it's only the part one, if you will. And so the spring is pushing to the right. It's moving to the right when it's on the tabletop. And so the spring is going to do positive work of spring. Normal is only when it's on the tabletop. So part one again, normal is pushing perpendicular to the surface by definition. The motion is parallel to the surface. Is normal doing any work? No. So final answer is there, positive, positive, zero. Everybody good? Now changes in kinetic. Again, let's go through the work energy theorem. And so net, uh, change in kinetic is equal to a network. We'll put all the works together. So work of gravity plus work of spring. If you wanna put normal and zero it out. And so the gravity was a positive work. The spring did positive work. So our change in kinetic should come out positive. And think about one half mv squared from start to finish. It might start from rest. Right? Later when it hits the floor, five minutes later it's zero. But if you remember, we're looking at the impact speed. It's going to be bigger than zero. So overall, isn't this thing speeding up the whole time? 
due to some reason. And so it should make sense, it's speeding up. Delta U, and so this, since we have a spring, think of it as it's the work done by conservative forces and you gotta have that negative relationship. Well, I have change it work done by gravity and the spring. And so both of them had positive and so positive and positive, but that negative is there. If you remember, it's because of the theorem. We talked about lifting a book and lowering a book. So overall, you're gonna have negative change in potential uh, energy. And I'm not gonna put a subscript there because it's collective. And here's why. What's happening to the height? It's decreasing. And then if you ask yourself about the spring, what's the spring doing? You go from max compression, maximum potential energy stored in the spring, and then it it's going towards equilibrium. Well, what's the potential energy when you're at equilibrium? Zero, and then it, it leaves the spring, right? And so your, your compression, if you will, or you could say your displacement is decreasing. You went from a lot of elastic to no elastic potential. Final minus initial. And changing colors, just keep with my pattern. Now let's get nitty gritty. And by the way, I'm gonna add one to it. What if it's the block only? Well, then we can only consider kinetic energy. So whatever that was, that's gonna be our change in mechanical energy. And so, by the way, I'm going to add in here the earth and spring. If they're not part of the system internal, now they're considered external. So even though they have conservative forces, they're external to the system in that consideration. But what if we include everybody? What if we have the block earth and spring? I can include kinetic. I can include gravitational potential. I can include elastic potential. Well, change in kinetic was positive. The other two had negative changes in potential energy. Again, I don't know what number wins, right? I don't know how it nets out. And so your alternative is the work energy theorem. Changes in mechanical happen because of non-conservative work. Do we have any non-conservative forces? Yes, we had the normal force, but did it do any work? No. And so it'd be the work done by normal, which would be zero in this case. And so whatever the total negative change in potential, it would equal, it would be reversible with the changes in kinetic, just like the simulation. Good deal. Again, these are not the easiest problems to start with. We're hitting you hard at the beginning because we want most time to be spent, okay, with the hard questions type. So I'm gonna give you about five minutes, small group it, try the pulley at wood, modified at wood. It's been a while since we've done a pulley. Force diagram, ooh, how many force diagrams? Two objects, two diagrams. So this one's a little different in that regard. And then be very careful, I'll give you a heads up, the tension string is pulling on both blocks, right? And so be careful where you're looking there. So about five minutes, give it a try. Resume. Okay, so with this one, uh, you know, are the tensions the same? So far, everything we've done with an Atwood pulley type of system, so far is that the tension pulling on block one is the same magnitude. Yeah, it's a different direction forward back, but it's at Newton's third law. They are equal in magnitude on each other, okay? Now I say mostly and so far because when we hit rotation, those two tensions won't be the same uh, and we'll have to look at the rotation of that pulley disc. So that's coming in the future, but so far right now, 
FT1 equals FT2. And so with that, I got that gravity is doing positive work. The tension one is doing negative work. The tension two is doing positive work and normal does none. Good? All right, and I use the force diagram visual to help figure that out. And then the changes in kinetic energy. Hold on, it's not sliding up. Why? I wanna slide up. Well, you can see some there. Um, I got the positive change in kinetic energy. Um, yes, it's all speeding up, but I use the work energy theorem, net work. And so when you add up work of gravity, which is positive, and then the two tensions, they're equal forces over equal distance traveled, they would be equal and opposite net to zero work. So I tried to show that in red. And then your change in gravitational potential, because there's no springs, is going to be negative, not only because it's lowering, it's decreasing the height, but the negative work due to conservative forces, well, it's just gravity that's conservative doing work. And so that minus is from the theorem, gravity's doing positive, so you get a negative change. Come on, let me slide up. Yay, okay, had a change tab. And then the bottom two, oh, I didn't change color, I'm sorry. But the bottom two were that nitty gritty, how do you define a system? So block only, it's the positive change in kinetic, it's a positive change in mechanical. Gravity it would be considered external. And so gravity is speeding it up. And then the block earth system, well, you, if you take the kinetic plus potential changes, you may not know if it's equal and opposite. So consider non-conservative. Again, it said there's no friction, thank you. But you had to recognize that tension is non-conservative. Tension is doing work, but because right now the force of tension is equal on each object, then this distance traveled is the same. It would be this equal amounts of work, but positive negative net to zero. Good deal on that one. Are you feeling better as we do more? And so not only with work energy theorem, that's what this was a practice of, work energy theorem, but also that block, block earth, block spring earth. And I just now remembered on the one above, I said I was gonna add one and I never did. What if up above they said, so I'm gonna add two here. What about the change in energy, it, mechanical energy, if you define it as the block spring? Meaning the earth would be external. So again, this is that spring launched on a smooth tabletop and it goes airborne. And so gravity would be external. And so what's happening to your mechanical energy here? Would it still be zero? Yeah, and so this would be the change in kinetic and the change in elastic potential. Well, you're speeding up the whole time. You only have a negative during the elastic period, but it's not the whole time, right? And so if gravity is your external force, it's speeding you up in the second portion, right? So some of that is gonna be like positive 40, negative 20. Some of that kinetic, the speed up due to the spring is gonna cancel out, net out. But since gravity is then considered external, so gravity would be external, you would have a speed up or increase, sorry. And so it would be a positive change in mechanical, but careful, these two would not be equal, okay? The change in mechanical of the block only, spring would be doing external work and the earth. Good deal on that. Notice what they all have in common. You're always gonna consider the object. I haven't seen a question yet. <laughs> AP, gotta, gotta say yet. But I haven't seen where they're like, oh, your system is just the earth and spring. 
typically you include the object, right? That's who they give you the mask for. That's who we draw the diagrams for. The object is usually always in these changes. Okay, let's keep it going a little bit. Page four. Now it should be a little easier. So now we'll do some calculating. How about that? And so number one on the top of page four, and this may be all we get done, I don't know. It says, if the amounts of work shown above were done on a two kilogram item, find the following. So we've got all these works listed. And by the way, I, you know, maybe I thought about it one year, but this isn't a particular problem. What would be the situation, and this is rhetorical, that you would be pushing and you would have a string and you would have friction and you would have gravity and you would have a spring, right? And so maybe this is a multi-part or multi-object, huh? a crane, maybe, okay, maybe. And so it's a complicated probably setup. Don't worry about that. This is just about that um, regurgitation of the work energy theorems. Can you take what's given and apply it? And so all those works, let's identify who's conservative and who's not, because that'll help. What about a push? Non-conservative, tension. Non-conservative, friction. Non-conservative, gravity. Conservative and spring. Conservative, okay. Change in E. Again, you're like, well, what kind of energy? AP Physics 1 only studies mechanical, so that would be mechanical, okay? Well, we don't know what it is. So we'll, we'll, we'll go back to the system is what it is. Everybody's included. Yeah, that's a great question based on what we did, but they don't specify. So you can go under normal conditions, everybody's included. That's kind of my go-to. And so change in mechanical is due to non-conservative work. And so who's doing work non-conservative? Well, I have a positive push. I have a negative tension and we have a negative work of friction. And so that positive 500 minus 800 minus 100 gives us a final of negative what? 400 joules. That's all we're doing on this problem. This isn't necessarily AP, it's kind of just stepping us towards. What about changing kinetic? Well, work energy theorem, it's equal to network. So what are we gonna do? All of them, all five. And so just to save room, I'm gonna go for the number. So note to self, it's all. And so we get a positive 500 minus 800 minus one. We already know that's negative 400, right? And then we've got a positive 300 and a positive 200. And so that negative 400 with an extra positive 500 gives us positive 100. Change in U, potential energy, no subscript. And then D says change in gravitational potential energy. And then E says a change in spring or elastic potential energy. So what about C? C is gonna be a change in U for both, okay? And so D, E, and F, or C, D, and E are kind of done all collectively, same principle. And so these are gonna be uh, the works equal to a negative of the work done by gravity and the work done by a spring. Again, that theorem for conservative forces has that negative as part of the equation. And so a negative work done by gravity was a positive 300. Work done by a spring is a positive 200. Final answer, negative 500 joules. And then even easier, same method, but here it would be a negative work by gravity, so a negative 300 joules. Similar, but just the spring, it'd be a negative 200 joules. So 
So hopefully that's not too bad, right? And then change gears. Now we want change in height. Well, what kind of energy relates to a height change? Gravitational potential energy equals mg delta y, or you could say mg delta h, same difference there. And so the change in gravitational was our negative 300 equals the mass, which was two times gravity, which is 10. And we're looking for that height change. And so change in height would be a negative 300 divided by 20 or negative 30 divided by two, which is negative 15. So if you get a negative height change, what's happening to your object? It's going down, it's decreasing, it's getting closer to the earth, right? So your height is decreasing. That one felt better, right? Why didn't we start with this? Okay, and we got time. Ooh, let's revisit power. We got a motor here in number two, still on page four, a 1,150, What's that W? Watt. So that's our power. And so just remember, beware of the W. Uh, is used to pull a 150 kilogram mass treasure chest up from the ocean floor at, ooh, constant speed. The water applies a resistive force of 800 newtons. So this is similar, but a little different than our diving into the pool. Now the treasure chest is maybe on the bottom of the floor, but we've already been lifting. So we're looking at the present tense, constant speed. And so if we draw a little picture, okay, so maybe it's here, it's moving up, constant speed. And so it has a particular weight. What other forces are acting on this treasure chest? The water, so as it moves up, the resistive water force acts down. So we can tip to tail. I'm gonna move my FG maybe more sideways there. So I'm gonna tip to tail. I really don't know how big to draw it. So I'm just gonna pick one. Those two are not necessarily equal. But you can't travel at a constant speed with two down forces, right? Constant speed means your up force has to balance all the down forces. So I know there's gonna be a really big up force. What are we gonna label it? Motor, F lift, maybe there's a cable and you wanna call it attention, just label it something, right? So I'm just gonna call it F lift. Again, motor's fine. They didn't mention a cable, but in real life, typically there's a cable. Okay, and so again, with old stuff, you know that the net force equals zero. The net work is going to equal zero. So what does that mean about everybody's doing work? Well, the lift force is gonna be doing positive work. Gravity is gonna be doing negative work, and then the water is going to be doing negative work. So I don't know those numbers yet. We're just kind of getting into the mindset, setting a stage. Hopefully it'll go quicker. And so, A, how far can we lift the treasure chest in one minute? Okay, in one minute. Minute minute, 60 seconds, that's my first thought. And so with time, do we have time in our work and energy equations? Well, it relates to energy, but power equals whatever change in energy, and that's a mechanical energy maybe. Uh, we haven't specified what change there. And then divided by time, so if we're how far? Okay, so let's see. 
the we're lifting so maybe we want the work done by the lift force over time right take it one i don't see distance we're solving for distance but work could be the lift force times distance over the time so there's the distance that we're going to be solving for everybody good and what did we say? I'm gonna go one more step. And so one more step. What did we say the lift force was equal to? Right, so that balance of forces, the lift force, I can plug in FG plus, I don't have numbers yet, 23? Oh, I'm not doing numbers yet, sorry. That's my next step. And so this is our final working equation, okay? They gave us the force of the water and we're gonna use magnitude. Yes, it's resistive. We've already said it's, but I'm going that lift force is equal and opposite to the sum of the gravitation and the water. And so power 1150 equals Fg would be what? Mass times gravity, so 150 times 10, 1500 plus 800 times that D all over 60. And so grab a calculator. I don't remember. What do we get? 3.91. Okay. Just wait for a couple of verifications. Not that I don't trust you. Oh, uh oh, wait, 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 wait. Okay, forgot the zero. So multiply. Okay. Gotcha. So final answer 30. Yes, if everybody else was an SI, that's my norm, y'all. I don't know if you've noticed. I convert at the beginning, so I don't have to convert at the end, okay? Because all of our equations and constants are based on SI units. Ooh, scared me. All right, next time we'll do part B. I pledge allegiance to the flag.